G-E-L, look at the bottom. We're all back together now. Prince's Quarters, September 5th, 7 p.m. After reporting on the situation, Mem, Leisha, and Galeb offer the prince their services once again. Galeb! All right. I don't even know. These cost so much. What about disciplines? Presence as a dialogue choice. Would be nice. When one of your actions increases the risk of an opponent's focus, the increase is reduced by 30%. That's really good. And the cost is really high. <laughs> Silver tongue. Prevents your opponent from focusing a skill. Fortitude. Oh, available only in exploration. Ability to withstand physical pain. That's interesting. Interesting. Withstanding pain, huh? We have it already. Dialogue power. Increases the chance of winning by 50% in case of a tie. Uh, it's only five. The cost is five. Oh my god. Wait. Yeah, get it then. That's really, really cheap. This one, not so much. <laughs> Are there any, like, really super cheap ones? 25? That's kind of cheap. 45. No, it was just that one that was, like, really, really cheap for some reason. Walls of the Mind. Okay. Dominate. Dominate generates one less hunger. Could be good in the long run. Plus one dominate. We still have 130. Oh, mental effects dominate, so maybe this is one that we wanna... Oh, but we don't have psychology. That's the thing. No, you know what, Galeb, um, Galeb is totally a highly educated, very good at deduction kind of guy for me, so... <laughs> but I feel like education is not that useful, though. You know something, but you can probably also deduce it from other methods, so maybe... Maybe deduction. Deduction 3 costs less than education 3. 45, 60. Weird. If we have dominate, then we might not need intimidation. Persuasion, rhetoric. Yeah, these ones, if we can find a lock, that'd be great. Okay, let's let's try going a little bit into disciplines then. Oh, but that's it. That's it. Presence. Sure. 30 more. Social. And then... Mental would be for dominate. Or intimidation. I'll go for mental then, even though we don't have psychology. Because intimidation does, or uh, physical does intimidation and celerity. We don't even have celerity. Which, so it's the same thing then. Okay, whatever. <laughs> it's really hard to see what the optimal way to do this is. And like always, you've completed your mission. Like always. Those words don't come from me. You must know what they say about you here. No, I don't know. Enlighten me. Well, you have kind of a reputation. It's actually rather flattering. What exactly do they say? Oh, you want to know? I didn't think... Simple curiosity, nothing more. Everybody kept saying that Galeb Bazori has been in tough spots before and that you come through them unscathed. They were right. Don't listen to gossip. Forge your own opinions. Don't worry about it. It's not a natural thing here. It takes some experience. Mens et manus. Is it just me, or does Galeb look deader than usual? I thought we couldn't see his veins before, but he looks like a real vampire now. Are Galeb and Shu Feng, like... Romantically involved? I wonder. Mind and hand. 
That's the MIT motto. One of my teachers used to say that the only way to really learn something is by doing it. You have a lot in common with him. I'm <laughs> unsure of how I'm supposed to interpret that. It's a compliment. You didn't tell me what was in those files you gave the prince. I don't see how that's any of your business. To make up your own mind about something, the best way is to go to the source. And apparently, Jason Moore is well informed. I see. You'll have to be patient, Fang. Do you... Do you think your success on the mission could play to our advantage? I mean, for... The Prince will decide your fate when the time comes. Being useful to her can't hurt. How do you feel about it? Honestly? I just want to get it over with. Like when you're going into finals? Even if there's no going back? It's a little late for that, isn't it? It is. Your child, Beryl Underwood, did he have any second thoughts? No. I don't want to discuss it. He's your only child, so I wondered how it went. Well, could you enlighten me? It's a little bit hard for me to judge the distance between Galeb and Fang. Galeb seems like he's on the defensive, even though I thought they would be more like mentor and student. Sure. Beryl is very different from you. He always has been. I was blind. It won't happen again. Beryl would have begged me to get what he wanted. Your patience reassures me. I'm making the right choice with you. You seem to really have a problem with him. Yes, and that's why you must stay away from him. This separation between you, what caused it? <laughs> Don't dig too far into it. You know this is something I don't discuss. That's too bad. Disciplines, dialogue powers, can be used on all compatible dialogue choices. To use the dialogue power, you must activate in the selection wheel. Oh, only one dialogue power may be active at a time. You may activate or deactivate the power as long as no dialogue option has been selected. It generates hunger. Okay, hunger is easier to get back. It's easier to fill our hunger. L2. Increases the success rate of fit by 50% in the next skill defense tie. Oh. I see. Okay, that's uh, that's what we just got. Sure. Don't need it for the moment. I'm not one to beat around the bush. Especially on a matter like this. So either be frank with me, or be silent. I'm sorry, it's just that it's not easy for me. I'm listening. Beryl asked me to come by and see him. No! Did you? I didn't think anything bad could happen. I actually thought that- You ignored what I told you. Don't ever do that again. What did he want with you? Nothing, in particular. He wanted to get to know me. He told me about Seattle, the Camarilla. He was just being nice, that's all. Beryl isn't nice. He's dangerous. I'm going to have a word with him. But... Wait here. Shu Feng sounds more, a little bit... And then you can go rest. All right. Thanks, Ms. Ortiz. Like her dialogue kind of sounds like she doesn't really know what's happening here. We know why Beryl wants to talk to her. We read a document as Leisha in his room about how... He wants to embrace her. He wants to steal my child from under me. No. That ain't happening. Do you think it will take long? I promise. I won't move a muscle. She's like a child or something. Like a, like a kid child, not a vampire child. I'll wait for you here. But she's supposed to be super smart in MIT and all that. Wanna bite? Does she have a class ring? We'll have to check. Wanna bite? <laughs> not right now. Any news here? Everyone is stressed out. I've never seen anything like it. They're all talking in hushed voices. They barely dare to look at each other. <sighs> People and their moods. I'm not interested in that. I saw them take one of Jason Moore's bodyguards below. To question him, I imagine. That could be of interest to you. Say, how are things with the girl? Excuse me? It's Zhu Feng, right? She's not a girl. Things going okay? 
Caleb, yeah, Caleb doesn't like talking about things to people, but I want him to talk to things about people so we can hear what he's thinking. <laughs> I think this is true, though. Yeah. Uh, Jason Moore's bodyguards, I'm assuming they're talking about the one that drove the car away. Probably not the beheaded one, just maybe. I don't know where the third one is. The interest certain people have taken in her has given me cause for concern. Maybe that's something you should talk about with the person in question. Do you think you'll embrace her soon? As soon as possible, once the prince gives me permission. You met Fang at MIT, didn't you? Hmm. I first discovered her by reading one of her articles. What does she write? She studies the blue economy. To each his own. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> it's about hope. A hope of making up for centuries of exploitation. Since when are you concerned about that? Since I saw Beryl poison our kind. Blood or money? I've never embraced anyone. You're a vampire. How come? The story of my life and my unlife. I have no progeny, mortal or otherwise. By choice? Yes. And no. When things weren't so strict, I could have asked, but I didn't have anyone in mind. Not like you and Fang. Now it's too late, as I've clearly been made to understand. Why? Why is it too late? Maybe you'll get another chance. Oh, you mean that after the SI is done with us, our overpopulation problem will be solved? Second I Inquisition? Didn't mean it like that. But still. Be that as it may, I hope the prince will allow you to do it. I don't know. I hope last night isn't weighing on you too heavily. I'm alright. The prince won't base her decision on just that. You've already proven your worth, Mr. Bazori. We'll see about that. I'd better be going. See you. We have an overpopulation problem? That's news to me. It's been tense here since yesterday. I don't like it. That's actually quite surprising, but it makes sense. The more vampires you have, the easier we'll get discovered. So we want to keep our populations low and exclusive because we're like a... We're like a club. An exclusive club. Anything around here? So you're all vampires. No particular auras though, because we already know you're vampires. Let's... Okay, if we're gonna go talk to Barrow. Oh. Are you a ghoul? Who did I just reveal? You? Yes, of course. Shu Fang is my ghoul. If we're gonna go talk to Beryl, why not read about Beryl? We know a lot about Beryl from Galeb's already 11th generation. Mm -hmm. Born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Beryl was born in Boston. His father was a head of the Sugar Trust, a sugar trading company. And they were awesome, except the one time when they weren't awesome, but then Galeb came to save their company, and Galeb became his mentor after Beryl's dad died. They formed a great bond, but Beryl was alone in heading the Empire after his father passed. He was only 26. Yup, yup, yup. Beryl begged Galeb to become a... to become embraced which happened in 1869. He was very ambitious, not very ethical. He managed to place a ghoul, William Havemeyer, as the mayor of New York City. Through this family, he created branches throughout Europe, which placed over half of the world's sugar industry under his control in only two years. Wow. Then he got involved in banking and investments. Caleb drifted further and further away. So it seems like in picking Xu Feng, Caleb is conscious about how she is, um ethical. It's, it sounds like she cares about things. But she's a human right now. Maybe that's why she cares. After you become a vampire, who even knows anymore? Underwood seemed to integrate himself into everywhere. Deep within governments, on the boards of conglomerates, nothing could stop him. Nothing satisfied him. Beryl was infuriated by his sire's lack of recognition. To keep hold of the secrecy surrounding his hegemony, Beryl ordered the assassination of Hazel Iverson's father, thus cutting short a burgeoning rivalry. Whoa! What he did not know at the time was that he would eventually support Hazel Iverson's rise of the Prince of Boston soon after the disappearance of Quentin King. Although Gala was his first choice, Gala's refusal forced Beryl to revise his plans, so he opted for a young woman, 
who was both ambitious and easily manipulated. Yeah, that sounds right for Hazel, but Hazel... Hazel's dad, you killed Hazel's dad. Does she know? Unfortunately, the puppet turned against the puppet master, and Hazel proved to be more difficult to control than expected. Worse, she earned Galeb's unconditional loyalty. Galeb's desire to sire another child was so intolerable for Underwood that he advised Iverson to refuse him this right. <laughs> so he's having... Does he really, really look up to me? He seems to really want my approval, but I'm not willing to give it to him. Deneb Osborne, Tremere. Popular magician at the turn of the 20th century. He performed at the galas in the States, and then he also went to Europe, and everyone went wild for his tricks and his personality. Charming, intelligent man, eventually attracted a young warlock from a local chantry in Europe, I suppose? Deneb was offered the embrace after a number of encounters and discussions. He accepted without a moment's hesitation. So vampires tend to be pretty elite people because a lot of people with a lot of talent, people who stick out, they tend to be noticed. Osborne took advantage of the powers that his new condition offered to expand his activities. He went on a European tour with a blessing of his chantry, returned to America to success and acclaim. He was rumored to have real magical powers. He ended up joining the Barnum Circus, seeing the crowd as a cunning and discreet way to blend in while satisfying his hunger. And then one of his clan brothers met him in his dressing room and made him an offer he could not refuse. Access to important occult knowledge in exchange for his loyalty. Drunk with curiosity, the Neb agreed to abandon his nomadic lifestyle for the protection of the Hartford Chantry. He faked his death by setting fire to the circus and left for Connecticut. He is a Tremere, so he knows a lot about blood magic and all that, I guess. The beckoning precipitated the Neb's rise as one of the last remaining key elements of Hartford after the departure of the Elders. His experience and investment in Tremere affairs enabled him to claim the role of regent, which he took on officially in 2015. From then on, he devoted himself to the Chantry's development and attempted to compensate for the disappearance of his fellow creatures by apprenticing new ones. It was after only a few months as the head of his domain that he was contacted by Hazel Iverson, the new Prince of Boston. This blue blood, who had a fraught relationship with the previous regent, sought to reconnect with Hartford and integrate the Warlocks into her blood conservation project. Initially skeptical, the Neb came to view the prince's proposal as an opportunity to spread his chantry's know-how throughout the entire region. Yes. Hazel is gonna be thrilled when she finds out that, as a mem, we gave him a whole district. We'll have to see. A message from Caius. Need you downstairs. Urgent issue. Bad timing. I'm going to have to choose. Help Caius or speak with Beryl. Oh. I have to choose? Um, I would probably pick to go to Caius because Beryl... There's no point in hanging around here bothering me. Oh. It's gonna take me a while. Very well, Mr. Sheridan. Please excuse me. Is Beryl me talking to him? I mean, Kaius needs my help. Beryl doesn't. Beryl's suspicious, but... What's going on here? The pile's not getting any smaller. Shredding paper? I've got cramps. I'm so tired. All you gotta do is shred papers. Just do it, man. The pile's not getting any smaller. Boston Domain, Princess Service, 2018, Gala Bazori. What is this? Oh, what I did for the prince? It's too slow. What a shitstorm! Oh, they're all shredding the papers here. Because I used to be an executor, so I've done a lot of stuff. Hunting, hunting for thin bloods and ghouls for the prince. Right. See, number, the first one. The kindred Nora Vasquez threatened the masquerade by playing with the court secrets. So we destroyed it's her. It's a good thing Journey had to sort it. Thin bloods. People who try to blackmail the prince. Very valuable shipment disappear from the port. Six mortals killed, shipment found. When we talk about vampires dying, we don't even say killed. We say destroyed. It's too slow. 
want a shitstorm. Are we evacuating or what? I'm gonna go get a drink soon. I can't wait to be done with this. Sheridan? Okay, well, you guys... Doesn't seem like we're safe here anymore. Decree of Embrace. I, Hazel Iverson, Prince of Boston, hereby authorize kindred Henry Donald Ross, embraced in 1684, a prominent member of the Boston court, to Sire Vincent Winfield. The duly authorized mortal worked go. as an investment banker and demonstrated his value and his great discretion by enriching the domain. Henry Donald Ross has never asked a sire anyone before. His patience commands respect. Furthermore, his activities at the Boston court have always been above reproach. In recognition of this, the embrace may take place at the sire's convenience before the end of April. Oh, it's really, really formal. Getting the prince's blessing to embrace somebody. It's too slow. I thought it would what be more a like a storm. oral agreement. No. Missing Kindred in 2016. Catherine Pye James. Henry Donald Ross. Henry Donald Ross? It's all gotta go. Isn't that the previous person we just read about? Last seen visiting his child. Benjamin Peckman. Pavel Emlov. Nasera Yang. Hey, Nasera Yang. It's a good thing Journey had to sort it. Last seen meeting at Barrel Underwoods. Henry Donald Ross. But when did the beckoning happen again? Did these people disappear because of the beckoning? Yeah, this is 2015. So after he sired Vincent Winfield, he disappeared when visiting Vincent. It's too slow. What a shitstorm. Yelling about it ain't gonna make it go faster. Whose room is this again? Abigail. Abigail. You... Oh, it's been so long since we've been here, but you had something suspicious on your pager too, didn't you? I'm sorry, I really don't have time right now. Hmm... Green. Oh, Lazarus Sheridan. The secretaries. The libraries? Mm-hmm. Okay. Just checking your place out. That's all. This is open for the first time. There ain't nothing here. Journey. Yep. Read this before us. MM. How are you? Journey's sire, I believe. Went east. As did mine. The beckoning. Please. April is really tense. Why is she so tense? I know things are bad, but did it get worse since we were last in the tower? Everyone's working hard. A rose, of course. Divas sure love their theatrics. <laughs> Is that what Galeb thinks about Toreadors? Have we read both of these ones? Yes, we have. Barrow really cared about the um, party. Because it was also a meeting. It's not just a party. We're not moving fast enough. Oh, we had like a schedule for the rest of the days. <laughs> September 13, monthly meeting with Mr. J. Moore. Don't think that's going to be happening anytime soon. If only Hazel would listen to me. Galeb, 
You don't come here often. Sorry, things are a little hectic here. As you can see. What's going on? Code Red. We're destroying all of our files. Following protocol. You're destroying all our files? No, not everything. Obviously. Some information needs to be safe. The rest will be a treasure trove for anyone who wants to harm us. That's what's got to disappear. It's a huge undertaking. And of course, Hazel's putting major pressure on me. She's normally a little high-strung, but you can imagine how much worse it's become. I feel like we should have a better method for this because the way you guys are going about it right now, taking each stack of paper and putting it into the shredder, seems like it's gonna take five years. Well, the prince didn't make the code red. It's her job. She's trying to keep us from going down with the ship, no matter the cost. I agree. And you know how much I love Hazel. But it's starting to get hard to manage. My efficiency might be the stuff of legend. But even I make mistakes. How about you? Is everything all right? After last night, who could say that? I mean, you know, your condition. My condition? You know, you're the eldest among us now. Oh. Oh, she's... I might... Wait, the beckoning only affects elder people? I know we read it already, didn't we? Gotta read the clans later on, too. They were pretty vague about this. It only affects elder vampires, and I'm old now. Okay. Are you worried about me, or the void I'll leave behind? You're an essential asset for the Camarilla. You disappearing now would be one of the worst possible things that can happen to us. It's true that reliability is a virtue in decline. Don't leave us. That's all. For Hazel's sake. I've got my own reasons to stay. I was wondering, what is it like? Do you hear voices? Does it come at you all at once? I want to know. <laughs> it's more like a feeling. A light one at first. Then it grows. And grows. Until it becomes unbearable. It doesn't look so unbearable for you. I'm hanging on, but you shouldn't worry about it. You're still very young. Listen to us. Talking about growing old, like mortals do. The beckoning is a continuous event then. It's not like, okay, in 1990, the beckoning happened. No, it's that if a vampire gets old, they automatically start getting affected by the beckoning. Has anyone tried going there to see what the old vampires are doing? <laughs> What's wrong? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's just the second Inquisition attack. <laughs> You're the only person here who doesn't <laughs> seem phased by it. London seems so far away. Now they're here. They're destroying the people we know. I really need to get back to work. Good luck. It's the end of the world and we're worrying about work. God, even vampires don't have it easy. Caleb, Caleb, Caleb. Are you gonna be alright? Are you gonna get whisked off? Oh, I wanna talk to Beryl too, but... Actually, if we look at Beryl's stats... I don't think we'd even be able to get much out of him because he... From a gameplay perspective, he's actually much stronger than me in basically every single... Every single... everything. <laughs> really. We're not moving fast enough. We've never used that elevator. Oh yeah, artsy. The arts and all that. Um... Barrel is... Wait, this goes upstairs. I do not want to talk to Barrel, but I want to talk to everybody else. Yeah. 
I've seen princes come and go. In the end, it always comes down to a struggle for power between the prince and their primogen. Hazel is strong, but will she last much longer? Whoa, look at these chairs. They're like folded. Of course, we read all this already. We need to burn these things too, probably. Somebody's gotta do it. Hey, this was blocked before. Where does it go? If we want to talk to Caius... Oh, I can't open the goals thing here for some reason. Oh, we haven't been here before, but let me just check what's going on with the other Primogen. Like, can I visit Hilda? Look at our computer? We never got a chance to do that. Sorry, Mr. Bazori. Miss Drory's quarters are off limits. What's going on here? Mr. Leto's orders. We've got to clean up. Oh my god. Asshole. Oh no, I missed the conversation. What was happening there? Who's is this? Wait, that's Beryl, right? Wasn't that Beryl? Dijon? Who are you arguing with? Now she's sending you. Run into some trouble with the prince? That's a question to ask Hazel. She's the one who doesn't know what she wants. Did she ask you to do something? She summoned me like a servant. I know she doesn't trust me even though I don't understand why. She's gone all paranoid Ice Queen, and there's no way I'm gonna let it cost me my head. I don't know how you still put up with her. You owe your place in the Primogen to her. What, you think I don't know that? I've always done my best to keep her from screwing things up. But when she reached out to Hartford? We know that the Jan is more with the Salem, so he doesn't like that we're partnering with Hartford. Is there a problem with Hartford? I told Hazel we can't trust them. Do you have any evidence to support what you're suggesting? She doesn't know Dineb the way I do. She wouldn't listen to my warnings. Her plan was bold. Risky is a better adjective. After what happened last night, I'm not sure you realize just how deep the shit we are in goes. Enlighten and me. I suppose you have the solution? Maybe. Not that I'm happy about it. There's interesting stuff going on in other places. Boston's not the center of the universe. We don't know who can be trusted. This is no time to leave. If the prince has kept you in the dark, she must have had a good reason for it. Just look at what happened. Open your eyes, Galeb! The Boston Camarilla is crumbling before our eyes! What are the odds we survive? Is it that bad? The party scene was bad. What? Uh, but we have to stay calm. I don't think she, I don't think Hazel knows what she's doing. If you leave now, you're no better than our enemies. You're one to talk. You know what it's like to feel called to be elsewhere. That has nothing to do with this. Salem isn't elsewhere. You won't be any safer there. It's just a starting point. We Thaumaturgs will find a way to deal with it. I see that you've planned for everything. I've already lost too much time. You shouldn't waste your time either. If you leave, Hazel will catch up with you. What do you mean? You know, she doesn't like people who have been disloyal, especially now. Hazel doesn't need new enemies. She should be wary. Be careful. Goodbye, Galeb. Wow. A primogen leaving. That's really bad for morale. I hope we make it. Well, we can't mess with him because he has the backing of the Salem, too. And he's going there. He's moving there. That's what we saw in Jason Moore's report. 
I hope we make it. I think a lot of the information that we have right now. Hmm. Hmm. Meeting Terra. For those who are uncertain Shit. as to what the future holds for them. It's definitely helped by the fact that we're reading the codex entries and the reports and stuff. But if you didn't read it, I think this could be pretty confusing. Because those things are all optional. And I feel like within the actual voice dialogue itself, they're not really doing that great of a job at uh, explaining all the little nuances between the characters. There's no time to make it pretty. Okay, well, uh... Leisha came back with a report, right? On the party, and then everyone's... Everyone's scared. This isn't Beryl's room, right? This is somebody else's, I think? Oh. Oh, it's not a room at all. Bad interior design. I don't like it. This is just so... No. No, put this couch facing this way, maybe. Actually, I just don't like it. <laughs> Quiet streets of Boston. Was it 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. right now? It must be 7 p.m. I'm sorry, you can't go in there. I want to see my goals again. I don't know why I can't bring it up. Because I want to go see Caius. Oh, I didn't pick already by coming here, did I? I hope not. Hilda? How are you? Caleb, our secret agent is back already. The soldier is on furlough. Not for long, I'm afraid. The prince will undoubtedly have some new task for me. At least she trusts you. She hardly speaks to her primogen. Even Beryl is in the dark. He's not used to that. It'll be good for him. Let's see what she says. I heard you were doing business with him. It's something to do with the Rosemont Society, my foundation. Why? I didn't put on my thin blood watch. Talking to me would be in her best interest. Okay, so this one, Intimidation, she has three. It's not gonna be a tie though. She might focus, or she might not. <laughs> now that I've said that, she's gonna focus. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, I should have just. I should have just. Oh, damn it! Now is not the time to be hiding things, damn given it. the circumstances. If the prince were to hear about shady business dealings, heads would roll. I get the feeling that no matter what we do, the prince is suspicious of everyone these days. At any rate, I have better things to do than stay here and be interrogated. All I can tell you is that Beryl's really the one who is in charge of it. Are you still not talking? You could say that. Any regrets? Hey, you don't get to talk to me when you won't tell me stuff. Damn it, I should have just ate the two hunger cost. Ah! Oh. Yeah, don't save the hunger, especially since we have vessels downstairs anyway. Kind of don't like this answer. Sounds like we're covering, covering Barrel with Fang. Okay. I'm planning to make up for it with Fang. Oh, so that's why you've become attached to that girl. I'm not attached to her. She's an asset for the Camarilla and a necessary balance to temper Barrel's wicked games. Personally, I find that giving a child so much power is dangerous. The problem is that you have to watch them all the time, otherwise they end up making a mess of things. Hey, do you remember how we saw in Mem's memories that Hilda got branded? You can see it here, it's on her neck. So it's not quite... Or maybe that's why she's wearing that little scarf thing to begin with. To hide it a little bit.
but trying to influence them is pointless. You must be subtle about it, that's all. I give a mem just enough freedom so that she doesn't completely hate me. But I know exactly how to make her do whatever I want. Do you really think you'll have time to embrace Fang? What do you mean? Well, with all the elders gone, who knows who'll be next? That's not something I'm willing to discuss with you. Suit yourself. No, excuse me, I have to go. Of course. Okay, we got some hints of things happening here. Hilda and Beryl are doing something together, and Beryl's the one in charge of it. Hilda... Some very... <laughs> She's talking about how she manipulates a mem? That's a little bit worrying too. 